Hello my friends, it's Chris Biffle, also known as Coach B, and it is July 7th, 2014, and this is a live webcast on Whole Brain Teaching. And we're going to start right now. So this is an introduction to Whole Brain Teaching, four of our core elements Class Yes, Mirror Words, Teach OK, and the Scoreboard. If you have questions, we love your questions, post them online, and pay attention to everybody's answer, but especially pay attention to the answers of the names in red. They are our experts. And D. Manuel, we're glad to have you online. Every once in a while, tell us how many viewers we've got. Here we go. So let's start off with something amazing and free. Are you new to whole brain teaching? Are you a veteran wibbeteer? That's what we call ourselves. How about if we give you something amazing for free right now? Anybody online really excited already about getting something amazing and for free? I'm just going to wait and see. Southern Teacher loves free. KD Carr loves free. Oh, goodness gracious. There's a lot of people who love free. Free's awesome, says Monkey Mom. We've got some freebies for you tonight. Let me just tell you this. My friends, there's freebies and there's freebies. Our freebies have got no strings. We're just like giving it away. All right, here's our first one, and this is a great one. We will give you a one-hour Skype session called Introduction to Whole Brain Teaching. It's with a member of Whole Brain Teaching's executive board. These are all full-time teachers. Everybody's a full-time teacher except me. I retired four years ago. And we'll do it anywhere in the world. We'll even throw in a free ebook, WTBT Basics, so you don't even have to take notes. Sign up at Google Equizit. And if you don't hear from us, check your spam folder. Who's excited already to get a Skype session? We're not kidding. We will do it. So go to that sign up place. Here's the Here's the address again. And D. Manuel, why don't you also be in charge of, no, Southern Teacher, be in charge of putting up the Skype sign up every once in a while. Now here's how the Skype is going to work. We'd rather do it with just a few teachers. We've done Skypes with 30 or 40 teachers, but we like to think of it as a training of trainers. So you don't have to have your administrator's permission. We'd like to have administrators involved. We want to give you the basics of whole brain teaching. And then we're going to say, look, if your school's doing professional development, let's talk with your administrator about doing some more of these Skypes. Can you dig that? Yeah. Here's the address again. We'll bring it up. Sarah is going to put it up for us every once in a while. So that's our fr first freebie. Now, I saw, I saw the excitement on the freebies, and I'm just feeling like, why don't we do another freebie? I mean, just give stuff away. Anybody ready for a second freebie? Understand that the whole webcast is a freebie, but how about a second freebie? Get ready. Here's the second freebie. Wish I could take credit for this one. But this one comes to us from the wonderful Laura Candler, one of America's most popular teachers, 450,000 Facebook likes. She's hosting uh, a guest blog by yours truly, and I'm writing about the five classroom rules. And she's giving away a free set of rules that she designed. You see how cute those are? So you can follow her on Facebook, 
you can go to the blog link there or the poster link there. They're free and ultra cute. Not just cute, but ultra cute. So I'd like to know how many people out there are here courtesy of the stuff we've been doing with Laura Candler. We just think she's the best. So who are the Candlerites? Let us know. Oh yeah. A bunch of them. It's just neat to have teachers working together. All right, my friends. Now here's a little promotion, our book. It's one of the highest rated books in any category among the millions on Amazon.com. Whole Brain Teaching for Challenging Kids. Hunger Games has 4.6 out of 5 stars. Lord of the Rings has 4.6. Whole Brain Teaching, we're at 4.9 out of 5 stars. One of the highest rated books on Amazon.com. We're happy about that. And let me say this. If you bought the book and you really like it, go to Amazon.com and give us a review. Let everybody know that it's worth $14.95. There is the link. You can read the reviews. Thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Mrs. Brooks, if you were my next door neighbor, I'd come over and autograph the book for you. Hang on to it. They will cross paths. It's only like $4.95 for the ebook. You can buy the print copy and get Kindle for $3. I mean, come on. That's pretty cool. Well, who are these whole brain teachers? I'm happy to say we're one of the world's most popular websites. 4 million views on YouTube, 10 million pages of freebies downloaded. It's just teachers helping teachers. And let's say, oh, here are my two friends, Biffy Bluebird and Smarty Wonderbee. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or needs a professional development certificate? Biffy, <clears throat> good to see you tonight. Good to see you, Coach. Smarty, what's the answer? Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Details are at the end of this program. Thank you, Smarty. You're welcome, Coach. They don't call me Smarty for nothing. Let's just start, okay? Enough of the preliminaries. Let's dive into the core four. Who's ready for the core who knows absolutely nothing about the core four? The newest of the newbies, be bold. Here we go. I just love new teachers. Here we go. So class yes and other attention getters. Here's how you start the class yes. The teacher says, when I say class, you say yes. Then you pause and you say class. Let's try this. The students say yes. You say, however I say class, you say yes. Then you say class, class. And they say yes, yes. And you say classity, classity, and they say yesity, yesity automatically. It's so much better. Listen, listen to me. It's so much better than one, two, three eyes on me. I saw a technique where the teacher raises their hand and then waits until everybody in the classroom raises their hand. That's madness. We need to get the show on the road. We need to get the train started. Class, yes, boom, let's go. So, we've had people use class yes in an auditorium 
And the kids, 500 kids are chattering and the principal goes, class, and the kids go, yes, boom. So the key thing on class yes, teach kids that when you say yes, fold your hands in the listening position. So veterans and newbies, here's some variations on class yes. You can say class a bing bing, or yada yada class, or hey class, so oh my class. So everybody right now, give us some variations on class yes. Give us some variations on class yes. Share your creative wisdom. Aloha class. Class Aru. Classity class. Oh my wonderful class. Keep those suggestions coming. Macaroni and cheese. Yes, please. Class a doodle do. Class a two. Hey, my class. Hey, my yes. All right, you got it. So, newbies, you're not a newbie anymore. All right, let's keep going. Now, here's the deal. Use variation. High or low pitch, fast or slow, comic or serious, say it once or many times. If you don't get their attention at the first class, yes, say it once or twice more. You can use class yes to start a lesson, to interrupt a class activity, to reduce the hubbub for crowd control before entering or leaving class. Here's the beauty of it. Here's the, here's the pattern. I'll go to my 3D mix here. I can even do 2D mix. There I am. Hiya. So the red box is the teacher. The call that magenta blocks is the students. So you say class. They say yes. You speak briefly. You clap twice and say teach. And they say okay. And then they teach each other. And do it again. There is the pattern. Round and round and round. Here's a little summary. There's really three versions of this attention getter. Class yes, class boom, or a core knowledge call out. Let's just talk about those three versions. So class yes, we've already taught you. Sometimes, a lot, kids will forget to fold their hands. So you say, class, boom, and they say, yes, boom. Or you say, class, a ding dong, boom, and they say, yes, a ding dong, boom. We have to get the hands folded. Hands are distractors. We want visual information, and we want to silence the motor cortex for a little while. So class boom is our second variation. And then your kids probably are missing some math facts they shouldn't be missing. So instead of anything, you say, what's 9 times 7? And they should call back, 9 times 7 is 63. Or what's the capital of Florida? And they should call back Tallahassee. So use a core knowledge call out. Which of our veterans have used core knowledge callouts? How have they worked? And what callout are you using? Pay attention, my friends. Who's used core knowledge callouts? What have you used? This is the great part of the program. You get to hear from some live teachers. Math facts and science vocabulary. Math facts, addition facts with my first graders. Elements of art, says John Siller. I say a major city and the students name the city's states. What's a noun? A noun is a person, place, or thing. History facts. My friends, there's some basic information that kids don't know because they haven't had enough repetition. 
I, I'm going to take off my glasses here. You know, if you're a veteran, when I take off my glasses, I, I'm, I'm just pretty perturbed. When I was a kid, they taught us states and capitals. My friends, I know that Jefferson City is the capital of, of Missouri. But you know what? It would be more useful to know the largest city in the state. So instead of doing states and capitals, could we do biggest cities and states? I mean, I know Sacramento is the capital of California, but are there some kids that don't know Los Angeles and San Francisco are in California? Let's change it from capitals to biggest cities. Can I get an amen on that? A real small point. I'm taking a drink to see if anybody goes along with me. Got a couple. Kid Shanny says amen. All right. Wow. It's an amazing night when you get a lot of teachers to agree. You know that's true from staff meetings. All right. So there is our, here is our little summary of the class. Yes. Piece of cake. Now let's just go right on to mirror words and other student engagers. Here's how you start mirror words. The teacher says class, the students say yes. The teacher says when I say mirror words, you say mirror words and make my gestures and say my words. Mirror words and then you raise your hand. The kids say mirror words, you say good. And they say, good, here's how it looks. Watch me. You say, in fact, a lot of times you just say, mirror words. Say my words, make my gestures. And if you talk like that, kids will automatically mirror your words and automatically make your gestures. You say, good job. And they'll say, good job. This is so fun. Why do we do mirror words? Well, we're crazy about 100% student engagement. And you look around the classroom and you'll see everybody saying your words and mirroring your gestures. Mirror words, one of our most powerful. Let's have some testimony here, my friends. Sometimes I feel like it's a revival meeting. Testimony to the power of mirror words. Who's using mirror words and how much do they love it? I'm taking a drink. Let's pay attention to the online audience while we look at the introduction. Our heart says mirror words gets every student involved. English language learners repeat modeled English. Has it worked with older students? My friends, I love the question about older students because I used to be, I'm an old has-been college teacher. I taught philosophy. Philosophy, the study of the nature of wisdom, has three branches. Metaphysics, the study of all of reality, epistemology, the study of knowledge, and ethics, the study of nature of right and wrong human actions. All day long in philosophy, we need to make the abstract visual. I'm taking off my glasses again. We've got a lot of students who can see. The visual cortex is the largest part of the brain back here. Make the abstract visual and you're getting a huge chunk of their brain. Make it visual and physical and you're getting the motor cortex as well. Oh, that sounds so great. Maybe there should be something like all of your brain teaching or complete brain. Wait, I got it. What if we called it whole brain teaching? Uh, 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 that's too simple. I, I don't think anybody would buy that. All right, my friends. Let's keep going on mirror words. A 
Again, variations. Say it loud, say it low. Say it fast, say it slow. Be funny, be serious, say it once or many times. Variety, the brain loves variety. Ever wonder why almost every video game has levels? Almost every single stinking video game has levels, why? Because if you do the same thing over and over to your brain, it gets habituated. You had a hot fudge sundae last night, it was so good. Would you really have one for breakfast? We're even habituated to delicious food. How much more quickly are we habitu habituated to non-delicious lessons? Andre, can you give me an amen on that one? Change it up. Now, here's the mirror pattern. Take a look at it. The teacher is in red, the students are in blue. The teacher says class, the students say yes. The teacher says mirror words, the kids say mirror words. The teacher speaks briefly using gestures for 15 to 45 seconds. Clap twice and say teach, and then the kids teach each other, and then you check comprehension and start it again. Let's go over that again. You say class, they say yes, you got that down. You say mirror words, they say mirror words, and then you just teach your lesson. You clap twice and say teach, they clap twice and say okay, and they teach each other, you call them back. We've done the class yes, and the mirror words, we'll get to the teach okay tonight. One night, whole brain teaching starter kit. So there's three kinds of mirrors. We've listed them all here, but don't worry about all three. Just pay attention to the first one. Mirror words. When you want 100% student engagement, you say mirror words, they respond mirror words, they mirror your gestures and repeat your words. Speak slowly in chunks. There's silent mirrors, and in silent mirror, they don't say your words, they make your gestures. Magic mirrors, well my goodness, in magic mirrors, they create their own gestures. Let's see what magic mirror would look like. So I don't make any gestures and I tell a story. Or I might say, in a hard math problem, there are three things to remember. Addition facts, writing neatly, and checking your work. If you talk slowly, even in an abstract situation like that, kids will come up with gestures. All right, let's do the teach okay. Here's how we do the teach okay. The teacher says, when I say teach, you say okay. And you say teach, and the kids say okay. And you say, good, now when I say teach, you say okay, and turn to your neighbor and teach them the classroom rules. Teach, okay, and they teach each other the classroom rules. Teach okay is our version of think, pair, share, without the think. People are saying, but you're a philosophy teacher, don't you want the kids to think? Here's my problem, friends. You say, I want you to think about this for a while. Do you know what they're thinking about? We want fast processing speed. Reflection is great when we're in the act of writing. But if I've just explained something for 15 or 20 seconds, I want you to speed up your processing and be able to say that to your neighbors for 15 or 20 seconds. Let's use writing for reflection. We want fast processing speed. All right, my dear friends. Teach okay, same thing. Say it high or low, fast or slow, comic or serious, once or many times.
let's just talk about kids with slower processing speed. We've seen videos of kids at the start of the year who are very hesitant in their speech. That's where a child starts. Just like if a child is a slow reader or a child has difficulty with math facts or a child is a child with autism, that's where they start. Well, we will make adjustments, but that's not where they're going to end up. Everybody with me on that? Keep the train moving. Here's the teach okay pattern. It's just like the other ones. You say class. They say yes. Speak briefly. Clap twice and say teach and then do okay. They say okay, they teach each other, walk around the room, praise or prompt them, praise them for their gestures, prompt them to use gestures. Now, here's again the beauty of the online audience. I'll tell you what, you could clap, and I'm taking off my glasses again. If you're just a wild, wacky teacher, you could clap three times. Oh, I know. You could clap twice, and then twice again. You could clap once and pat your head. You could do a twist move. This is my signature teach, okay? You can't use it. Uh, uh, teach. Veterans, give us some examples of variety in the teach, okay? What do you say and do as your transition? What do our veterans say and do as a transition in the Teach OK? Cindy says it makes kids accountable. They have to listen to what you said. Clap, stomp, stomp, teach, says Ragular. Change your voice, clap and tap foot. Clap, clap, snap, snap, teach. Clap, clap, wiggle, wiggle, teach. Clap, snap, clap, snap, teach. Clap five times real fast. You get it? Have fun. Don't keep feeding the brain. Oh, this is a great one. This is a great one. If you keep feeding the brain the same food, it'll spit it out. <laughs> Don't keep feeding the brain the same food. It doesn't like the same food over and over again. And guess what? That's what we do in lecture. Oh, you didn't like yesterday's lecture? Well, I wonder how you're going to feel about today's lecture. I think minute to win it is too slow, Janie. How about five seconds? All right, so here is the teach okay pattern. When you want students to teach each other, use mirror words or silent mirror or magic mirror, then say teach. Students clap twice and say teach. And they paraphrase what you said with your gestures. Here's one of our mottos. I don't think we'll ever get tired of this one. Let's see how many veterans we have out there. How do you finish this motto, the longer you talk? What's the rest of the motto? I'm taking a drink. More students you lose, says Ms. Tin Turn. Sarah Matter, yeah. You know it. And an amen. Thank you, my friends. The more kids you lose. And the less they pay attention. And we're losing them right and left. All right, let's go to the scoreboard and other student motivators. You see how compact this is? Dear colleagues, you stand at the gates of teacher heaven. No more candy rewards, no more lottery tickets, no more play money, no more clippy charts, no more weird pencils from Oriental Trading Company, no more table points, no more dropping stinking marbles in a stinking jar, no more treasure chests. Veterans, can you testify a little bit 
about how lovely it is not to be given away junk. No more token economy. No more warm fuzzies. No treasure chest for pre-K, really. Broke a marble jar in my classroom. No more junk. Look, we've turned our classrooms into carnival sideshows. Oh, you did good on reading. Let me give you a fuzzy bunny. The reward for good reading is the joy of being able to read better. Why are we turning our kids into beggars? Especially because it doesn't work. What do you do instead? You gotta have it instead. Here it is. My friends, here it is. Here's the instead. Just make marks on the scoreboard. The reward is purely academic, purely intrinsic. What do you get for a smiley? You get the zingy joy of performing like the big kids two grade levels higher. Brag about it. The reward for doing great is the feeling of doing great. A kid says to you, here's the scoreboard incidentally, level one. So if you're in third grade, you'd put fifth grade on one side, baby school on the other. And the reward for winning is you won. And keep the score within three. Keep the score within three. Kid will say to you eventually, what do we get for winning? And you say, you get the same thing you get when you win a video game. Feel good. Brag about it. And look forward to the next level. Nobody paying you fuzzy bunnies to play a video game. It's the joy of playing. Go watch kids play tetherball. Are they looking for lottery tickets? No. It's the joy of playing, of winning, of competing, of trying to get better and better. And two grade levels higher, that just shocks them. But it's totally doable. They can be as fast as kids two grade levels higher. Level two, girls versus boys. Just who's going to win? After a while you say the reward for winning is lining up first, but you don't even start there. Anybody digging girls versus boys as the second level? Anybody tried girls versus boys as the second level? Yes. Wendy Diddle D says yes. Girls versus boys says Amy. Sarah. Why two grade levels higher? Because kids are used to you saying, well, you can, you're in third grade, I expect you to perform like fourth graders. Kids can be as kids can be as fast as kids two grade levels higher. They can be as focused as kids two grade levels higher. Let's just set the bar way up there. And they'll rise to it. So here's another level. Oh, you get a point extra credit if you win. Everybody does. Or you lose a point extra credit. Here's, here's what Sarah Metter said, and many teachers will tell you. Veterans, how far can you go on level one just smileys and just fifth grade. How far can you go? Can you get to Christmas with no rewards? If you can, you've got five levels left. Through December for sure, says Sarah Metter. Milk that scoreboard cow. Melinda made it through January. The longer you can go, the better, because teaching after Christmas is when the rogue is pretty hard to hoe. Yeah, we got our metaphors all goofed up. Milk the cow, but don't stop the train. 
All right. Now. How do we motivate students to work hard? Well, more recess or less recess? That is a good one. Keep it for after Christmas. More or less recess. And then teacher versus students. You say, here's teacher versus students. You say, look, let's be honest. I want to boss you around, that's why I became a teacher and I want to give out a lot of homework. You don't want to be bossed around and you don't want any homework. Cards on the table, you want one thing, I want another. So I'm not mad at you when you're off task, I get to boss you around, that's a point for me. And extra homework for you. You see, you don't scold in teacher versus students, you congratulate off task behavior. Andre, Sarah, have you guys used teacher versus students in middle school. How has it worked? They dig it, says Andre. Students love it, says D. Emanuel. That's how we start the year, says Sarah. So whatever you do, remember it's a long year. Save a lot for the spring. A. Huck, do you use it in high school? Would you write us a note on the forum about high school? we got some high school teachers who don't believe it. Why is the scoreboard important? It's your prime motivator. So the kids give a mighty oh yeah when they score a point and a mighty groan when they don't. Here's the variations. Keep the score within three and go up to the next level. Here's the scoreboard pattern. You note a positive action, mark a smiley, point at the class, they clap their hands and say, oh yeah. You note a negative action, mark a frowny, point at the class, they lift their shoulders and groan. So in the old days we did this, oh yeah, or mm. now we do wah. If you like the baby school, it's wah. If you don't, it's mm. Now, be careful. After 40 years in the trenches, I can read minds. Right now you're thinking, how does this stuff all fit together? Veterans, here's something new for you, a WBT flowchart. Who's excited out there by seeing how it all fits together on a flowchart? I'm taking another drink. I'm going to let the excitement roll in. Whole brain teaching flowchart coming up. Who's excited to see this flowchart? Oh, there's excitement out there. I see the excitement. Flowchart coming at you. Here we go. It's so simple too. Check it out. Is that a simple flowchart? You start and either you pick class yes, class boom, or core knowledge. That's your first step. Then you do mirror words, then micro lesson two to four and teach okay and do it again. And use the scoreboard anytime. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Pick one of those three, do mirror words, speak briefly, teach okay, and do it again. And use the scoreboard anytime. Class boom, I'm gonna tell you right now. Good question. You say, class, boom, and they say, yes, boom. It's the reinforcement of folding your hands. Let's look at it again. The flow chart is part of this download. Very, 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 very simple. Now, if you want to go up a level, 
There it is. Now look at the variety possible. Pick class yes, class boom, or core knowledge. Then mirror words, or silent mirror, or magic mirror, or hands and eyes, or just talk. Short lesson, teach okay, and go around again. This right here is where you keep feeding the brain its favorite food. New stuff. Nice little simple. Here's the other one. See? Just right there. Brain snacks. Now, you're wondering, how do I remember all this stuff? See, I'm psychic. That's me over there, Coach B, with the green hair. You do this. Put down a couple things you want to work on. I want to work on class, yes, mirror words, and the scoreboard. Then give yourself a grade. Mark, tally marks here. That's how you remember it, just a few at a time. Mrs. J, I hope it's a good place to be inside your head. All right, veterans, give the newbies some advice about how to start. Tell them what not to do and tell them what to do. Come on, veterans, help us out. Start as slow as you need, says Sarah Metter. Don't be overwhelmed. Change is hard. Southern teacher says start slowly. Baby steps, says Ms. Tin Turn. Practice, says Ms. Tin Turn. Start on the first day, I agree. What would you start with on the first day? I'll tell you this. We're going to have a program called the first hour and then the first day. And we'll tell you exactly what to do, how to greet the kids, what to say, what to look for. But we'd start with class yes. That's coming up towards the end of the summer. First hour, first day. Lesson planning. We've got you covered. Here's a little lesson. See, you put your attention getters here. I have class, classity class, and then I'm going mirror words. Then I'm reminding myself I'll do the scoreboard here. So boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Write it out. First get their attention. A two-sentence micro-lecture and then do the teach okay. Now here's the thing. People say you don't spend the whole class doing this. Well, what do you spend your class doing? You spend your class teaching and the kids teach each other what you said. Your goal is not to cover material. Your goal is to teach your kids the material. So when you say mirror words, you're teaching them the material. When you say teach okay, they're teaching each other the material. When you call them back, you're teaching them some new material. You teach, they teach. You teach, they teach. You teach, they teach. Otherwise, you're a tennis coach who lectures. I'm going to tell you all about how to play tennis, but you're not going to get the practice. Yes, we do this. And they have to read and write too. But we have a reading program and a writing program, which we're not doing tonight. Stay, stay with us, Oma. You'll see. Now you're afraid to ask. You dare not even think. What about the kids who don't go along? What about the kids who do not go along? Everybody with me on that? Here's the screen. That's the question, isn't it? Here's the answer. Huge point coming. 
Rehearse the teach okay five times a day, emphasizing the full turn and gestures as your kids instruct each other. After each rehearsal, pick five to eight kids as a leadership team, no more than two rebels. Stand next to the weakest rebel and give a short sample lesson ending with teach okay, observe the full turns and gestures, praise any improvement by the leaders and rebels. There's no place for the rebel to hide. Let's go over that again. You do your stuff. Say, all right, now we're going to rehearse. You, 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 and you, you guys are good classroom leaders, stand up. I'm going to clap twice and say teach. You show me how fifth graders clap twice and say okay. You just focus on five kids. Four of them are kids who are really good. One who isn't, you don't point out the one who isn't. When there's only five kids standing there, there's no place for that rebel to hide. You won't fix the rebel the first time, but five times a day, keep switching it up. Put the spotlight a little bit brighter on, a, on, some, on fewer kids and never tell the rebel he's not a classroom leader. Now, the golden key to WBT success coming right now. This is new. Who's ready for new? I'm assuming everybody's ready for new. This is the golden key to WBT success. The key has changed. Oh, yeah. The key has changed. And Nancy and Sarah and Andre, who are part of the mysterious inner circle, don't even know the key to WBT success. Here it is, my friends. Entertaining rehearsals. Not just rehearsals, but entertaining rehearsals rehearsals. Practice class yes, mirror words, teach okay and the scoreboard responses five times a day entertainingly. Say okay let's practice our class yes fast, loud. If you make your rehearsals fun you'll get their limbic system involved which is their emotions. You'll get their brain pumping out dopamine, which is the brain's joy chemical. If you make your rehearsals fun, they'll become addicted in a positive way to rehearsing well. Let's go back. Here's how you make rehearsals fun. Don't just rehearse. It isn't boot camp. It's goofy camp. Say, let's see your first grade mirror words. Yes, that was baby school. Now let's say, see your fifth grade mirror words. Great job. Give me a baby school mighty oh yeah. Give me a fifth grade mighty oh yeah. Practice class yes, mirror words, teach okay and score over responses five times a day and keep that grin on your face because... Fun practice leads to advanced implementation, leads to more fun practice. Say that again. Fun practice leads to better implementation, leads to more fun practice. Oh, oh, oh. Round and round. Round and round. Round and round, my friends. That's the merry-go-round. That is the merry-go-round in teaching heaven. I said, entertaining rehearsals, teaching heaven. Teaching heaven. That's the key. Entertaining rehearsals. So, my friends, here's Ms. Linenthal. 
Gosh, the Core 4 sounds great, but how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Ms. Lenenthal, good to see you. Good to see you, Coach. Ms. Lenenthal, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. Last week, I kind of had a hoarse voice. Oh, Ms. Lenenthal, I'd hate to hear you when you had a hoarse voice. Oh, I'm feeling good now, Coach. But how do I get professional development credit and a copy of these slides? Go to wholebrainteaching.com. Click on PayPal button and donate $5.80. It's a code for this program. Before long, sometimes within minutes, you'll get an email with a professional development certificate and a copy of these slides. There's the PayPal. There's the certificate. And there's another one. And for the rest of July and August, virtually every Monday, have a web chat with WBT gurus, including Nancy many times, Southern Teacher many times, Sarah many times, Andre many times. We're having WBT chats because Coach B is going to be on the road. Now, let's go back to the wonderful giveaway we had at the start. There it is. There is the address for the free Skypes. Scrap, I don't know, I'm not going to do bundles for a little while. Who's signing up for a free Skype? First place I'm going is Eastern Arkansas. Great, we want to help you out. Check your junk mail because if you hear from us, your computer might not understand. Maybe two email addresses. And you know what? You don't even have to have your school's permission. I'm going to be nice. I just got back from Houston, my friends. Next week is a chat. Michigan, I am I'm coming to Detroit. Can someone please post the Skype right there? I've been to Florida, Miami, Tampa a bunch of times. Here's the thing with the PBIS. You take the PBIS rules and you put them under our rule four, which is make smart choices. If you want me to come to your state, get someone to invite me. How do you get someone to invite me? Let me show you. Look. Here's the website. Right here. See where it says contact us? Send me an email. We will work out a professional development arrangement with your school. Send me an email. Love to come. Here's my email address. What the heck? My email address coming right at you. Yes, have your principal email me. I'd love to hear from your principal, MGD46. All right, my friends. Great night tonight with a huge audience. 
Thanks again to Laura Calder. And we've got some amazing programs coming up. Check every Monday night. Talk to our gurus. We will have a program before school starts. The first hour of the first day. And then we're going to have a program. 13-week master class. 13-week master class. We'll have some material we've used and, of course, some new material. Thank you, Andre. Always good to have you online. Fun rehearsals, Andre. I think that's the key, and I don't know why we didn't think about making rehearsals fun. All right, Carla Kay, I'll see you there. All right, so, folks, it's this is what we do at the end. We tell us what where you live and what grade you teach. Just let it all flow down the screen, all 200 of you. What grade do you teach? Where do you live? Let it flow down the screen. Waco, Texas, Foley, Alabama, Arizona, Phoenix, Kentucky, Prosper, Texas, Nebraska City, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Mariana, Florida, Palmdale, Santa Maria, I'll be in Santa Maria before long. Tucson, San Antonio. First grade in Portsmouth. Pawtucket, Rhode Island. So, so fun to help you out, my friends. Whole brain teachers are the best. Do me a favor. This is why I love doing these webcasts, because it's not a public school function. We can talk a little bit about prayer life. Pray for my family, please. We are in need of prayer. We have been for some time, and we feel the effects of prayer. Well, thank you so much if you've been including Coach B and his family in your prayers. All right, my friends, it's Coach B signing off, saying, power to the teachers, power to the kids. We'll see you down the road.